Uh, I am Scott Duncan. I'm one of the assistant coaches, and uh, we are going to talk to you a little bit about our game preparation and how we go about figuring out what our game plan is. And uh, my counterpart, Matt Wise, who works with me, uh, is also an assistant here, and uh, we work together on the games that we're assigned in terms of scouting. So the first thing I guess we try and do is uh, watch a minimum of uh, five games, uh, usually the most recent, of each opponent. If we have time, we might watch you know, one or two more. Um, and if it's a conference team, or if it's a team that we've played in the past, then we'll always watch our games a year ago mm -hmm. with them. And uh, what we're really trying to figure out is their style of play. Uh, what are they trying to score in? How are they going to defend us? Uh, what are their key strengths? And if they have a weakness, you know, what are their weaknesses is? Mm -hmm. is. Uh, I've often compared a scouting report to a term paper. So you're doing a lot of research, you're taking a lot of notes, you get together with whoever your partner is, you compare notes, you put together what we think the other team is going to run, how we think the other team is going to play, and then we get together with Coach Shiat, you know, a day, two days, three days uh, before we play an opponent, depending on what the sequence of the games are. Mm -hmm. And we'll brief him uh, with a written report of the team, their personnel, their style of play, what they want to try and do offensively. Are they a team that runs a lot of sets? Are they a team that runs continuity? Uh, what, what are they trying to do on offense? <clears throat> a couple things on what they're trying to do defensively. Um, and then he reviews that. He's got stats. He's got rosters. So he starts to familiarize himself with that team. A little easier if it's a conference team because we're now that we're four years into it, um, you know, we're familiar <clears throat> with the conference. And then uh, Matt and I will uh, begin watching a lot of the same films that we've watched yeah, so that coach gets an idea <coughs> of uh, what, we, what we've seen, what we've scouted. Right. I think he's a little old school. He likes to do his own scouting report, so when we're showing whatever films we're watching, he's taking his notes on offense, defense, special situations. He's got his own little form of, of scouting. And then Matt, uh, typically, and I'll let him explain exactly how he does it, but he does all of the film cut-ups and the cut-ups are what we show four different times uh, to our team you know, prior to the game. So, Matt, tell them. Uh, when you had said, or when Coach had said <coughs> that we try to do a, um, like a research paper, we basically try to do an advanced version for the head coach and for the scout team, and then for all the players and the rest of the staff, mm -hmm. more of an elementary basic version. So when we do our video edits for the team, um, we really try to simplify a lot of what they do. So if you're playing a team that runs a ton of different stuff when they're on offense, maybe we'll try to pick out their most common actions and try to prepare the guys for that. Try to keep it simple, especially when you're playing twice a week, it can get difficult. Um, I'd say that's for the most part what we try to do. We break it into different categories. Um, we'll try to teach the guys personnel. We're a big team that tries to coach to the other team's personnel. Um, what guys are shooters, what guys are drivers, what guys crash really hard for rebounds, stuff like that, so that our guys know their matchups. Um, like I said, we try to prep the other team's offense. And then um, most of the teams in this league are really good at the defensive end and run some different unique things defensively. So we try to give them a heads up there as well. Um, so we take all those video edits, pair them with written scouting reports, and along with sometimes occasional other notes that we'll leave in their locker. Um, and then the rest of it is prep on the floor with mm -hmm. our scout team. And mm -hmm. Coach, if you want to talk about how we use, utilize our scout team. Uh, those are typically players that are redshirting, mm -hmm. uh, that are walk-ons. And basically we get together with them 30 minutes before the first practice that we're going to introduce the other team. And they'll run through five, six sets. If they're a set play team, um, they'll run through whatever continuity offense they may have. They'll try and learn that and run it as well as they can. And for the most part, uh, our scout team does a great job of 
you know, understanding what we're trying to do mm -hmm. and, and their, their basketball IQ is pretty good, which is something we look for in walk-ons. Uh, I think Jack Benz, who's been on the scout team for four years, would be first team all scout team. I mean, <laughs> he's that good at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then during a 20-minute block in practice, the first time that we introduce uh, the other team, we'll walk and talk through their offensive sets. Mm -hmm. And we'll give them kind of verbally, you know, what to expect, what style of play. Uh, this is after they've seen a tape of that Matt's put together mm -hmm. of style of play, transition offense, half-court offense, personnel, uh, and defense. Maybe about a seven-minute tape um, highlighting those areas. Right. And then we'll walk through those and talk through those, how we're going to defend certain situations, and then we'll play it live. And then if ideally you have at least two days before the next game or sometimes three days, uh, then we actually will play it live for about a 20-minute segment uh, during practice, either the day before, uh, two days before, just depending on how much time we have leading up to sure. the game. But, um, you know, our philosophy on preparation is give them as much as we can give them, give them as much detail as we can give them on how we're going to defend certain players, how we're going to defend certain actions, but understanding that once the ball goes up, each game has its own identity, and you know maybe they've made some changes, maybe they make changes on the fly. Mm -hmm. So you know it's not an exact science, and at the end of the day, it's your principles primarily on defense that are going to get you through whatever type of offense they run. Sure. So. Man, I gotta ask with the technology these days, with the internet and stuff. As far as you know, putting, cutting film and getting that stuff ready, how much easier is that, or is it still? I'm, I'm sure it takes time, but what's that like now, especially in this tech, technological age that we're that we're in now? Actually, um, <clears throat> I've lucked out coming into the business at this time. Um, we use certain programs on the internet where I could look up so specific of a question, like if you asked me on our team, what is Riley Grabo from three on the right side of the floor versus man-to-man -man in the last eight minutes of games? I could get you that information from the different things that we use. Mm -hmm. And then um, one of the things that's fun about our staff and the way that we do our scout teams is it's really kind of all hands on deck for putting together different scouts and edits. So, um, you know, if we were at certain BCS schools, maybe I would have to do every single edit. Um, but that's not the case here. I get to really dive in more with Dunk, and we team up hard and mm -hmm. really try to know our scouts as well as possible. And then likewise, you got other groupings that try to do the same um, amongst the staff. And I think that's a huge benefit for the younger guys on the staff. We get to be more a part of preparing the team for that specific game as mm -hmm. opposed to just the cutting of film. Right. But to go back to your original question, um, the technology, it's kind of fun. Like mm -hmm. uh, over the summer, we did a lot of work on um, our pick and roll offense with our guards. Uh, we knew that we were gonna run a lot of pick and roll this year. And so uh, we did several edits with um, different NBA guys, our, uh, Tony Parker, uh, Trey Burke, that, that formerly of Michigan, those kind of guys that really score well off pick and roll mm -hmm. and tried to show Josh Adams and Riley Grable, these guys, um, maybe some different tools, little things they could use to play a little better. Mm -hmm. Scott, has you know, you've been in this business for a long time with the technology and stuff. Has it made, I know it's all, still a lot of work to go in to break down an opponent and in that, but with the technology, has it become more streamlined? I don't know if easier is the right term, but has it become more streamlined and, and, and stuff as opposed to, you know, 10, 15, yeah. 20 years ago? Well, going back all the way to when Shai and I started in the late 70s, early 80s, that was when you had a coach on your staff that was des designated by the NCAA as a part-time assistant. Mm -hmm. Full-time job, part-time pay, but your biggest job during the season before all of the video was available was you in-person scouted. So you were always scouting the next team, mm -hmm. and it was live scouts. So you had this booklet, and you made the scout, and you came back. You shared it with the head coach. He decided which what he wanted to share with the team, very much like the NBA does now. Mm -hmm. And then as technology increased, the, the NCAA did away with the in-scouting rule, so you can no longer go watch a team play. Mm -hmm. And so now you have so much more video 
uh, available. Mm -hmm. So there's no secrets. And right. every team, uh, if you look at any coach that has lasted for a period of time, uh, they know what they're doing uh, in terms of preparation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's not a secret. Uh, and it just depends on the philosophy of the head coach. I think Shiat, uh, Ben Howland, for example, at UCLA, those two guys were more like a Bill Belichick where they want to know everything sequence. They want to know every detail themselves. They're not relying on anybody else. And then you have other coaches that it's not as important to them versus something with their own team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's personal preference. Uh, you know, the last 10 or 15 years I've been part of a staff that, you know, puts a great deal of time into preparation mm -hmm. and knowing that, again, once the game starts, you know, anything can happen. But, right. you know, you always want to be in a position to give your team the best chance to win regardless of how old they are, how mm -hmm. good they are, you know. Uh, and it really doesn't have anything to do with your talent level. You know, right. uh, it's just your philosophy mm -hmm. of... of Preparation. How far out do you guys do scouts? I mean, now you guys have a game Saturday as, as we're doing this. Will you guys, uh, are you guys already on your next scout or how does that work? How far in advance, I guess, are you, are you breaking down game plans for games? Um, well, I'd say that <laughs> to answer your question, it actually kind of starts back in the early fall when the conference schedule comes out. And so once we get our schedule finalized, then we need to decide on scouts. Obviously, we try our hardest to keep the assistants that have had certain teams over the last few years with those teams. Mm -hmm. It just so happened to fall this year that Jeremy Shiat and his scout team, uh, every conference game they have, they have back-to-back -back scouts this year. And it just fell that way. And we thought about changing it up um, to try to avoid that problem so that everybody has a week to a week and a half to prep. Um, but they decided they really knew those teams, so they wanted to stay with them. And um, for them, because they have all these back-to-backs, they scout probably about three weeks in advance of each time. I'd say for us, we're more along about every 10 days we have to have one ready. Mm -hmm. You know, an example of that would be, uh, let's say we had Tuesday's game at Utah State. So on Saturday, after the New Mexico game, on Shiat's desk before he went home would be a uh, summary of what we have watched the last five or six days. Mm -hmm. Again, it would be personnel, offensive strategy, defensive strategy, just to let him, over the course of the next 15, 16 hours, you know, familiarize himself. And then Sunday morning, maybe 9 o'clock in the morning, if, especially if it was a day game on mm -hmm. Saturday, He'd be in here by 9, wanting to watch as much tape as he could, and we would probably have our first uh, showing to the team at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it would be brief, and then we would walk down to the court, walk through some of their sets, uh, and then really you know, just keep picking away at it on Monday, since it would be a quick turnaround, uh, and try and get a, two films in to the team on Sunday, two films on Monday, and a film maybe two films, and these, again, are five to seven-minute tapes. Mm -hmm. They're not anything that's long and drawn out. 